Hi guys, so welcome to 10 Minute Tea. As you can see, I have my tea here and we will see if we can do this in around the 10 minutes. Uh, I have also got, as I uh, think I mentioned in the last episode, I can't remember exactly, but I've got Yorkshire Tea Gold or Yorkshire Gold. As you can see, it's still in its wrapper, so uh, we'll have that next time. Um, but yeah, very excited for that. Never had it before, so we'll uh, we'll see what's going on there. I don't know whether, to be honest, I don't think it's going to be any different than Yorkshire tea, the normal Yorkshire tea, because I just don't see how you can make something like tea better. I just, it, it seems, I, I understand that there's good teas and bad teas in the sense that, you know, you can judge it, but I don't understand how you can get from a good tea to an incredible tea, you know, it's just not one of those things. For example, you can get from, uh, I don't know, a good bacon sandwich to a, a really excellent bacon sandwich, right? You can do that, right? But with a cup of tea, I don't know how that works. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see if Yorkshire Gold is better than the normal Yorkshire tea. Um, but yeah, so I just like the box. Have you seen how cool the box is? It's sick. I mean, it's got some gold box. How cool is that? It's like, you know, it's all sorts of alchemical vibes and kind of like spatial temporal dimensions folded into wholeness in a kind of rectangular square box. It's incredible. Anyway, so I've got a few different items on the list today. Uh, I, I did first want to uh, mention that um, I have a swing door on my kitchen and... Uh, so it's never very good because I always get hit with Newton's third law whenever I'm going out. So what I do <laughs> is I put my, I, this is terrible, I rest my cup of tea on the swing door to hold it in position as I'm trying to go out of it. But you see, of course, then you get the force coming back on you and it's, oh my God, honestly, it's, uh, it's not good because half the time, if I do it in a certain way, my, my cup of tea jiggles and then it almost goes over the floor. So obviously Newton's third law doesn't favour me, but you know, that's, that's uh, another thing entirely. So um, today what we're going to do is first off, uh, as promised, because I said in the last episode that, well, I believe I did, uh, unless I didn't say it, I, don't, I can't remember, but... Um, my plan was to go through the resellers on YouTube, uh, watch a few of the videos and see what they are up to because as I mentioned to you, um, basically since doing uni I've just not had the time or the inclination to tell you the truth to go back through and you know kind of be a part of the reselling community because I've been so, I mean I've, I've just been completely separa separated from it. So I went to Brad and Jazz, uh, you know, the uh, two Aussie thrifters, their channel first, um, because I already had talked to Jazz on Instagram, and uh, obviously I'd watched their stories and things like that. And, um, you know, I wanted to check in on how they're doing, how things are. So they have a warehouse now, if you're not aware, uh, and they seem to be doing really well with things in, in that warehouse. and. Uh, we've got all these uh, shelving lined up and every you know it's it's like a proper operation going on there um so that was really really nice to see they're in there with Cara as well uh the thrifty pixie i think she's i think she's still called that on on youtube and uh yeah so it's all going well for them you know things are popping off all the rest of it so that was lovely to see um and the videos seem pretty good you know in terms of like their style and the the, the updates have done on them in in terms of uh, editing and stuff really really nice style really smooth um i don't remember how long the videos were or anything but i think it was quite a nice length as well if i remember rightly so that was good i went over to nick and i expected uh, nick hills of course I expected Nick's to be like exactly the same, and it practically was. There was a, a few kind of updates, I suppose, in his presentation style on the content, and uh, I noticed he had a new computer set up as well, uh, which looks really sleek. It looks really nice. It's uh, got like a little laptop, and then he's got it on like a sort of pull-out thing or something. I don't know. It was like a weird tiered thing, but really cool. It looked really nice. But, you know, he's... he's uh, workspace is all the same you know it's all as it is as far as i could tell um but yeah so it seems he's just you know rolling on uh things are just ticking for him ticking along nicely so uh yeah and i i actually i remember looking at his subscribers 
and he has something like 61,000 subscribers now. I can't believe that. I remember uh, looking at his channel and I think he had about 50k, but I mean, that's another 11k, so he's doing really, really well. Um, the next channel I went to was George Ross, Retro Reselling, of course, and um, I knew that he'd be doing well. I've seen him on Instagram. Again, I, I do occasionally check in with the stories of people on Instagram, so I do know a little bit about what's going on, but of course, I don't know. I don't watch the videos and stuff. Uh, I know that George has had a lot of trouble recently, though, or at least a bit of trouble with eBay in terms of, you know, things going wrong and stuff. He, he spoke about it on Instagram and and then, of course, he did a video on YouTube about, uh, I think it was eBay fees and eBay promoted stuff. I watched part of that video. Um, and, you know, I mean, it is, I, I agreed with him when I was watching the, the video, but, you know, eBay do take the biscuit with with the fees and stuff. And uh, they've got the promoted and all the rest of it that they're doing. And, and uh, you know, it is, it is a bit ridiculous, but... Um, you know, you can complain about it, you can try and see if that helps, but uh, at the end of the day, things go as they go, don't we? So that's that. But yeah, so it was nice checking on George. I believe he's doing pretty well on TikTok as well at the moment. I saw on uh, his Instagram, he, he uh, showed his TikToks and stuff and getting like thousands of views over there. I, I honestly didn't think that reselling content would... I mean, I suppose because he's doing it in a certain way, it, it really, really works, but... Um, yeah, he's uh, he's doing really, really well over there. Anyway, I'm going to have a sip of tea because, you know what, this is meant to be 10 minute tea and it's never ever, there's never going to be a 10 minute episode of 10 minute tea, I can tell you that. Mm. Oh, that, I think that's a bit sugary today. Very, very strong, but I think it's a bit sugary. Oh, it is nice though, it is nice. Anyway, so, who else have we got? Oh yeah, that's what I noted as well. I went on, so to try and find the channels, because I forgot about whose channel to, to watch. So, uh, I don't think I have them, well, maybe I do have them in my subscribers, but you know what I'm like, I don't have any common sense, so why the hell would I bother looking in the most obvious place to try and find the channels that I want to go to view? You know, that just doesn't occur to me in my mind, it's not how my mind works, it's like... Adam, go for the hardest thing possible, and that's where you need to be. That's, how, that's like how my mind was weird. Um, so anyway, I went to uh, uh, I went on the YouTube search and I looked for channels for UK resellers, right? And I scrolled down the channel list and I was like, whoa, these are, there's loads of new people here. Like there's uh, I don't even know, because I don't know the names, because they're all new to me, I haven't a clue, but there was just loads of new names, and I clicked into some of the channels, and some of the channels have got a fair few thousand subscribers, and I thought, wow, the community is like really, uh, you know, enhanced, and morphed, and changed, and everything, and when I looked at some of the comments, and the viewers, and stuff on live streams, totally different people watching the live streams, and stuff, so it was it was really, like kind of woke me up. I kind of thought, whoa, hang on, bloody hell, this is like an entire new community now. I kind of, I actually wasn't expecting it. So, um, yeah, so there's loads of new people. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, I went over to Andrew's channel, uh, uh, Monumental UK, and I wanted to see what he was doing. He's doing his, his <laughs> I was very surprised to see actually, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, he is doing his uh, streams, you know, his normal kind of drinking with Andrew streams. I'm sure some of you watch them. Um, and uh, I was surprised when I was flicking through one of his live streams to see for part of it, for actually over half of it or something, uh, he had his shirt off. And I thought, what is going on here? What, what, what have I stumbled into here? But yeah, there we go. And then the final person I checked in on, I think there was maybe one or two other people I checked in on very, very briefly, but the other person I checked in on was, I wrote down, is Zaheer, uh, and when I searched him, it came up with only cool stuff, and I was puzzling for a minute, because I thought, well, what's going on here? What's Where's his normal channel and stuff? But when I realised, when I looked into it, he's changed his channel name from, like, Zaheer and Beck, or whatever it was, to Only Cool Stuff, and I guess his Only Cool Stuff channel, he's, like, maybe privated, or... Maybe that's just somewhere else that I don't know. But um, anyway, it, I think they're still going. As far as I'm aware, uh, the video that I saw was like published a few days ago, a week ago or something. So I think they're still going. Uh, obviously, we have the, the shop and everything. So uh, yeah, you know, there we go. So so I did a little bit of a sweep. I didn't do a, like a, uh, you know, 
watching about 30 channels or so. You know, the people I didn't check in on, which I'm really annoyed about, because I'll actually check in on them now, is Tommy and Tracy. I, I, for some reason, I didn't check in on them. Didn't check in on many of uh, the American guys, actually. I need to check in on people like uh, Craigslist Hunter and Golden Finger Picker and stuff like that, just to see if they're still going and stuff. I know Golden Finger Picker had a bit of a time where he, he, he wasn't doing it and then he was doing it and all, you know, I God knows what was going on, I don't know. Um, anyway, I'll have a sip of this again. Mm. Oh, it's lovely today. Like, it's really strong and I really, I love it when it's really strong. I just get a, like a buzz off it. So the other thing I wanted to talk about in today's episode, I know we're getting on a little bit, but uh, uh, I'll have the end of this team and as I say, we'll wrap it up as normal. So um, I want you to talk about crypto. The reason I want to talk about crypto is because I noticed something uh, this month, I would say around this month, where uh, I have my crypto portfolio, of course. I uh, have been doing crypto since 2017, so five years now. Uh, and I've been doing stocks for a little bit more than that, I want to say. I know I was doing stocks at 18, but then I had a break. So I, but I think I did stocks before crypto and then got into crypto. But anyway, I don't know what the timeline was. But anyway, I've been doing crypto since 2017. And uh, uh, the first wave of crypto, um, these specific coins that I'm invested in, uh, were really hot, really up and coming, really good. And I've noticed that now the space has changed and I realised quite how dynamic the crypto space is. Because certain coins, although they are, let's say, what's known as OG coins or coins that have been around for a while and they still retain a, a certain value and they're still... You know, they'll still get you your staking income or whatever and it'll still be all cool. Uh, they don't, when the next bull market comes around, they don't go up the same. They just kind of stay at a kind of fairly blowish price. You might go up a little bit. Uh, let's say, for example, that you had one of these OG coins and maybe it was 20 cent, right, per coin. Then you had the, the bull run in 2017 or whenever the last one was, like 2020, something like that. Um, and then you have the bull run and then it goes up to like, you know, $9 or something. Well, in the next bull run, it doesn't go up that high at, at all. Some of these coins literally might only go up to a dollar or two dollars because you see the market is so dynamic that the next bull run it's just a whole set of new coins it, that people are interested in the old ones out of the window this obviously they've not gone to zero or anything like that the uh the coins are still sat there all of these og coins are still sat there but only certain ones of those og coins end up going up with the bull market the next time around not all of them so it made me query things and it made me query my own approach to crypto and it made me query my own approach to the stage of life i'm at as well because of course i'm doing psychology so it all ties in so i thought to myself well hang on a minute have i become old here you know is that is that what's happened am i just investing in certain coins and have I just been, become complacent as an investor and, and not willing or, or maybe even not, it's not even in my consciousness to change? Um, it might not be the case that I'm, I'm not willing. It might just be that it's not in my consciousness. Um, and so that really hit, struck me. It really hit me and I thought, yeah, that's about right, you know. That's, that seems what it is. It seems that I'm getting complacent. So anyway, I, I've, since then, I've done a look around and I've, I've uh, rejigged a few things. And uh, although I've got some of the old coins still uh, in my portfolio, uh, and they will sit there because they make me a decent, a tidy little amount of money per month. Of course, in crypto, it's done per day. You, you get your staking income for most coins per day or sometimes per week. Um, but, you know, if you take that as a monthly figure, shall we say, I make a nice little bit per month, which I'm happy with. And uh, so they can just sit there. But certainly I've been looking and, and kind of scouting out for these changes because I think that's very, very important. 
and um, it's just a bit of something that I wanted to touch upon it's a bit of a lesson because it's one of those things like in investing where you get to this point in which you can become comfortable and being comfortable is fine uh, when you're a certain age and when you're at a certain level of, of uh, money or assets, right? Because you can just leave them there, whatever it is, you can put everything into blue chip stocks or whatever, leave it for 10 years, doesn't matter if anything really changes so much, obviously it'll stay pretty much the same, uh, that doesn't matter because you're just getting your dividends and all the rest of it and that's fine. Um, but for me personally, I, I realised that, you know, where I am now, it's not necessary for me to be uh, that yet. And I mean, I, I've, I've not got the money or the assets to warrant being that. I do need to still make some ri risky decisions so that then I can get up there a bit more. And you know what I'm like? I'm terrible. That's a, 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 it's a brilliant character trait of myself, but it's a terrible character trait of myself that I always want to win. I, I cannot... It's a horrible thing going in me. I cannot stand uh, not kind of uh, getting involved with something and being competitive and trying to do the best I can with it. Uh, it it's it's te it's a terrible thing, but you know you have to love it as well about yourself. You know, it's, it's a dual aspect thing. So anyway, um, I, I do want to make sure that that's the case, and I wanted to talk about it because I think it's very, very valuable for others who are interested in investing and stuff like that. But anyway, we are on 16 minutes, so I will uh, drink the rest of this. Uh, I should have said as well, I don't know whether I said at the start, but uh, when we're doing these videos, of course, feel free to pause the video at the start and then go and get yourself a cup of tea, or of course you may have already got yourself a cup of tea before doing this video, so, you know, that's cool, that, that'd be the... The ultimate, really, you know, being able to get into a regular habit. Ah, you know, 10-minute tea's on, get my tea sorted before I sit down and stuff. But uh, we're not into a regular habit of it now, so there you go. But, uh, yeah, so pause the video before it's on, grab yourself a cup of tea, and then we'll get into it. Um, next episode, so also as well, don't forget, if you've got any questions, I will answer them in the next episode. Uh, I didn't answer questions from the last episode because... The last episode has literally gone out just as I'm recording this, so I don't know whether there are any questions on that last episode. But if there are, I'll answer those in the next episode. And we'll get into a rhythm of answering a question or two, if I have any. Uh, and we'll we'll get into a rhythm of a few different topics and stuff. Brief, brief topics, because of course I don't want these videos to be half an hour, an hour or whatever. Um, but next uh, video, I am thinking potentially of uh, doing something with dreaming. I mentioned it in the first episode, and I think that's what I might do. Uh, and since I'm gonna be having the Yorkshire Tea Gold, and gold being related to the alchemical journey and all the rest of it, and uh, you know, obviously the, the imagination and fantasy being inextricably linked with concepts in alchemy, I think it all kind of ties in quite nicely, you know? So anyway, uh, I'll finish the rest of this. Mm. I've done well with that one. Sometimes I don't do well. Sometimes I uh, screw it up a bit. Sometimes I uh, get it too weak. It, it's the worst thing if you get a cup of tea too weak because it's buggered. You, like, you're buggered if you get it too weak. I, I mean, I know some people like it weak, but for me, I, <laughs> it's horrible. I hate it when it... it oh. mm. ah, right, anyway, so... Uh, oh, I was going to say I'll leave it there, but I've not even, I've not finished my tea yet, so I kind of I'm obligated to stay a little bit with the tea, so I'll I'll, I'll drink the rest of the tea. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about. I said the questions thing. I've talked about the uh, the resellers. Uh, if you are on Instagram, feel free to follow me. I think in the description there is a link to my Instagram or like my handles in there or anything. It's adsrobo96, at, at adsrobo96. I don't post much on there or anything. I had a very, very long break from Instagram for probably a year or just under, maybe nine months or eight months or something. It was a while anyway. Um, but I'm back on there occasionally now. I kind of just check in every now and then and put a story on every now and then and stuff. Um, uh, so yeah, feel free to follow me over there if you'd like. Um, and with that being said, we'll we'll finish this. Oh, ah, I'm 
and we've got that last little bit of tea that I said I uh, love in the last episode. Uh, it is really nice, but you know what's good? I think it's better if you leave the tea bag in for quite a while, because then you'll get a bit more of that like uh, real flavour hit the last bit. But I don't know. I'm going to try that next time. Yeah, it wasn't as good that time. It was better last time. It, the other one in the, uh, episode one, that last little bit of tea, divine. This one, like, semi-divine. You know, it's kind of like, what are they? You have the, uh, what are those demigods in, in Greek myth? Titans? No, it's not the Titans. Is it? Yeah, it's the Titans. No, it's Titans. It's Titans, right? Because you have the Olympians. No, the Titans are the other ones above them, like Kronos and Rio and... Well, um, maybe, I don't know, bugger it, I don't know, uh, it's one of them, you know, Perseus and all that, that level, that, you've got Perseus that level, then you've got the Olympians, then you've got the Titans up there, right, I'm pretty sure, and I think Uranus and things like that are, and Gaia, they're on the level of the Titans, right, well, I don't know, I'll have to look into Greek myth, you know, it's been bloody... Uh, 11 years, it must have been 11 years since I've probably look, properly looked into Greek myth. I've looked I've looked into it a little bit over the last three years, but not much, not to the degree uh, uh, that I would perhaps like to, but you know what it's like, time and everything. So anyway, I'll leave it there guys, thank you very much for watching, I will see you in the next, mi next episode of 10 Minute Tea, which will probably be in a couple of days or so, uh, so see you very soon.